probably the most exciting part about and that's actually the drop down menu uh, at this uh, really interesting but also kind of accurate points over here you pretty much can make like almost everything from all the uh, his point is pretty much that if you can control down all of the settings over here so i want to go ahead and break down oh. Um, right, so today I'm going to show you how to create this uh, distorted uh, text grid wave effect in After Effects. And at the end of the video, I've also included a link to the free project file that I've made uh, two years ago. But now, uh, I finally have the chance to actually do a video about this effect. So yeah, let's jump in. Right, um, so this text effect was pretty big. Uh, two years ago and for some reason two years later it has just completely disappeared so uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said that uh, let's go ahead and create a new text layer we can type in anything you want just something that popped into my head Bugatti how about that yeah like, I like Bugatti now what I'm gonna do is pre-compose this layer uh, this text layer over here go to layer and pre-compose it put it in a, a different uh, Composition. I'm gonna call this uh, text comp, and then I'm gonna decrease the size of the this whole composition until you know until the entire text layer is fitted is knocked inside of the composition. Uh, so I guess over here is like a, only a couple of hundred uh, pixels, both width and height. So I'm gonna drop that down already. Yeah looking nice and make sure you get like some spaces for the uh, next word that comes behind it and this is going to be very important when the text uh, is repeated uh, again and again and again and again and you can you kind of want to get some a little bit of space between each of the words yeah maybe drop that a little bit more nice and i'm gonna align this to the middle Right, going back to the first comp, and I'm gonna add in motion tile. I'm gonna apply that onto this uh, pre-composition. Right, so if you watch my last video about the eye rolling around the socket, you remember that motion tile. What the effect does is that it's created a imaginary tile uh, surrounding our layer, uh, including all the uh, background uh, borders of the layer. And as you can see, the effect can be used to control the tile around. But now what it, what it can also do is show more, uh, display more of that imaginary tile on the screen. So how we're, what we're gonna, how we're gonna do that is go over here to output width and drag that uh, uh, property way up. And also the same thing goes for output height. And now we can see more of that uh, imaginary tile that the effect has created and now when we get to the when we control the tile center it's actually gonna go around the screen like what we get in the effect that we had so now what we're gonna do is get this uh, entire display to loop around I'm gonna pick a good point to loop this I'm gonna make this entire animation like four seconds Make sure it's not too long and just for a little bit of an assurance I'm going to create a new null object and call this tile control and then I'm gonna pick with the uh, uh, position of the tile center to the position of the tile control that's alt click into the stopwatch of the tile then pick with that onto the position and boom, now we get a, a certain something that we can grab on to control the position of the tile. Uh, now it's all down to the job of animating this tile so that it goes along. All we gotta do now is keyframing the, uh, the tile control position until uh, it loops back at the 4 second mark. Uh, and I'm gonna pull up the grid and make sure it's where it's uh, type is where it belongs in the center of the video. Right now I'm gonna keyframe that position, click on the stop stopwatch, drag it over to 4 seconds and then I'm gonna Drag the tile control all the way to the right. 
until it stops back at that point maybe a little bit to the left you know because at the next action is gonna go to this right we'll, we'll try to hide a little bit of that uh, uh, looping moment All right let's see how this goes oh, there's still a little bit of pause there as you can see I'm gonna drag this um, drag this composition work area all the way back yeah that's looking good yeah it's looking good for now and then I kind of see that the gap between each of the words are a little bit too still a little bit too big for me how we're gonna remedy that is going over to the text comp go to composition settings and then drag the uh, pixels the width and the height of the composition down a little bit do, 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 do. yeah uh, I'm gonna change the font back to something a little bit more this one looks good okay right uh, I'm gonna adjust the, the height a little bit so that it covers the whole screen and then make sure you check back with the looping of the whole animation because after you've adjusted all the settings of the composition and all the textiles the gap between each of the word is gonna be adjusted accordingly and that's gonna mess with our looping of the animation slightly a little bit as you can see over here it sort of stops for a while uh, before it uh, keeps on moving so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that keyframe a little bit more so that it looks like is looping uh, what I'm doing over here is just gauging where this uh, part of the B is at the beginning of the video then get over to the end of the video and just make sure you know maybe we end up somewhere before that a little bit uh, by the way the way to pull up the ruler and after effects is uh, control R just press control R and you can drag up all the rulers over here right let's see if it loops that's a little bit better. Yeah, I'll stick with that. Oh, it was messing with my eyes a lot. I don't like this at all. <laughs> Jeez. Right, so the next step we're gonna do is uh, distort the entire tile. And before we can do that, make sure you open up a new solid and call it a background layer because we want we want the background to be distorted with along with the whole text. You know, pick any color you want. I'm gonna go with a darker royal blue. And then I'm gonna click on the tile control, go to the layer and add an adjustment layer. I'm gonna call it distort. And head over here to the effects and preset panel and look up the mesh warp effect. Put it on and now you can see the effect has created a bunch of uh, it has created a grid for us uh, with a bunch of uh, grid points that we could use to bend the layer to our will you can actually control the amount of rows and columns within the grid so if you want a more detailed uh, warp effect you can add more columns and more rows into it uh, right now I'm uh, just gonna stick with like uh, maybe five columns and six rows something like this now when you when you hover over a certain point the cursor is gonna turn black and that's when you know you can actually control the effect around like so and you drag this point to uh, maybe somewhere a little bit extreme over here sort of just slightly it looks like the uh, like the whole thing the whole surface of the thing is being bent up so it's giving a pretty good uh, dimensional illusion you know adjust you can adjust the curve as you can adjust with uh, any bezier curve as well right now create a small hill a small type hill over here like so okay, so we get that uh, we get that sort of bumpy look and every time you want to go back to adjust it again select this uh, effect and the entire grid is gonna appear out for you I'm gonna drag up the quality a little bit more just so we get a smoother look I'm gonna drag this up as uh, the effect itself is gonna decide which uh, part of the distortion is gonna go over which part of the uh, as uh, of the uh, effect so right now this one if I drag it down it is not going over the rest of the text layer 
but it's in fact actually going underneath so it looks like it's like a it's like a it's like a what it's like a it's like what is the opposite of a hill it's like a hole over here that the text has to go through and every time it goes through it's getting blocked off by these uh, uh, land surface over here which is the opposite of this one and if I drag that point back up it's gonna go over what's behind yeah so you know play around with this effect a little I'm gonna create a random some random hills over here for the text to grow through create some more variations Usually when you grab onto a point and then adjust the Bezier curve uh, and then reverse it into itself, it's gonna actually reverse this, uh, reverse this certain part of the layer over here. So when this type is going through, it's actually going through in reverse. It's kind of, it's kind of a cool dimensional look to it. I actually prefer uh, this effect to the other type of distortion. If only this uh, effect works with like 16 bit. I think we'll get rid of some of the artifacts over here uh, because we're just storing this effect way too much. So trippy. Oh my god. And then if you drag, you drag the uh, handle curves out. It's gonna drag out the uh, layer as well. Exactly, you know how you would uh, treat a Bezier curve. You drag it in, it's gonna get closer. You drag it out, it's gonna get further away. You know, it looks like it looks like it's going up a hill and then down here and then into another hill, and there's like some sort of uh, discrepancy within the surface over here as well that the text has to go through. Ooh. And now we'll get to the fun part, which is adding some shadows to this imaginary 3D hill that we get. So right now we're gonna highlight all of these uh, these layers, pre-compose them. I'm gonna call this the uh, uh, full tile animation. Then with the comp that we got over here, uh, what I'm gonna do is hover to the layer, uh, create a new solid and call it a shadow layer. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, color value to all black and then hit OK. Now we're going to create a new mask using the pen tool onto the shadows. Uh, something like this. I'm imagining the shadows going to be here somewhere. Boom. And then we'll adjust that shadows to match with the, uh, with the hill something like this right yeah so imagine that the uh, this hill over here is blocking off the pile the pile of text behind it and it's creating uh, its own shadow uh, casting onto the rest of the uh, surface drop the opacity down like so and yeah now we got some sort of a rough idea of a shadow. Uh, now we need to smoothen the outline of the mask and you know uh, you imagine that we're gonna do is go ahead over here to the mask feather and then drag up the feather drag the feather up. Now that's a pretty good shadow already but you know it looks like it's also feathering up this part over here which is being blocked off uh, by the hill and it needs to be something full-on solid. Uh, we're gonna head over here to the pen tool uh, hold on that and select the mass feather tool. So right now I'm gonna drop down the mass feather and then I'm gonna hover the mass feather tool on this point on maybe how about this point over here where the uh, uh, the shadow is supposed to be the softest right I'm gonna drag that out and then you can see it's create a new a new handle for us right here a new point if you drag this out, uh, it means that the shadow is gonna uh, protrude, uh, it's gonna be feathered outwards into this point right here and the further it goes the softer it gets like so and it's the if the point is over here that means the shadow is gonna be up here somewhere. I'm gonna go a little bit extreme at first and I'm gonna click on the mass feather tool again. I'm gonna uh, create a new point and I'm gonna drag that point back over here like so. The shadowy part of the mask is already dragged down over here but this part is still feathery, it still remains the same. 
uh, it's like there's more variation of the shadow where it's make more sense instead of having it just be an entire block of uh, shadowy feathery part right yeah so you can go ahead and adjust this uh, mask to how you like it uh, usually the further the shadows goes the um, softer is supposed to get so I'm gonna do just that right now yeah so now you can add more shadowy part to the uh, uh, layer by still maintaining on the shadow layer head to the pen tool and then draw another mask out uh, maybe your shadow part is gonna be here somewhere like so it's gonna extend out from this particular hill boom and then a uh, mask feather tool drag that thing out pull it in somewhere over here around here and also you take this point and then drag it inwards it's gonna compress the uh, the feather of the mask within itself it's gonna go the opposite side so that's when you can you know ease off the masking a little bit more ease off the feather a little bit I'm going to do the same with this uh, feather. Maybe if I change it back to uh, black to see how it goes. Yeah, maybe maybe it's looking better uh, on on black. And finally, I'm gonna top it off with the a uh, little bit of a texture that I found over here on my computer. Uh, it's an animated one. It's called a uh, brown washi paint. I'm gonna put that onto vivid light as a blending mode. I'm gonna drop down the opacity a little bit, just slightly. And then I'm, I'm gonna make it loop back again using. Uh, time remapping then I'll click on the stopwatch and using the loop out property it's gonna be able to loop until the end of the video so yeah now it's got a little bit of grungy texture I'll bring it up a little bit more just a smidge and then maybe if I uh, create a new adjustment layer and then head over here to find the curves uh, effect. I'm gonna put that on there and I'm gonna drag down the uh, white value a little bit to get a little bit more contrast on the shadows. Right, that's uh, looking good and yeah, I've also uh, leave a link down in the description below for the project file of this particular project right here that I made two years ago. So you can head over to that if you want a, a better look at the project. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.